Hey everybody, this is Alt F4. I'm going to make this video to show you just how easy it is to make your own Smash Brothers AI using LibMelee. This is a Python 3 API for making your own Smash Brothers AI. Um, this works with Slippy Online and could not be easier. So let's uh, jump into some code. Uh, these 20 lines right here are the quick example that's on my uh, read the docs page for LibMelee. Uh, this is all the skeleton code that you need to get going to uh, generate the basic game structures and uh, have uh, a, a running Dolphin instance. So let's start with this. So I copied this code into my text editor. This is just Atom, but of course you can use whatever text editor you like. And let's uh, walk through these lines of code one by one just to kind of be familiar with them. Uh, first is import of Melee. Uh, me uh, LibMelee is on pip, so you can just pip install Melee and it'll give you the latest version of the library. Uh, for there, we're gonna make a console object. This represents the console that you're playing with. Um, most of the time, this is going to be uh, Slippy Online, so it's gonna be a Dolphin instance. So that's why we uh, pass in a is Dolphin true, but uh, you can also use other backends, including an SLP file, um, or in the future, an, an actual Wii console. Um, and we're gonna give it some basic information like what port our AI is running on, what port our opponent is on, and our opponent type, in this case, we're gonna use a GameCube controller adapter to a play against, because we're gonna play against our bot live here. And then the uh, executable path to uh, the dolphin itself, and in my case, this is the full path to uh, uh, the location where the uh, Ishiruka version is. Um, the Slippy address is just a little local host. Um, you can actually view and play against uh, live running versions of a dolphin that are remote using this, um, but for the moment here, let's just keep with uh, local host. And a logger is not we'll bother with using a logger just yet. From there, we make a controller. Uh, the controller object is gonna be our primary method for pressing buttons on like a virtual controller. Um, this is the way that the bot is going to interface with the game. Uh, in this case, we're gonna say port. Uh, we're gonna be on controller port one, uh, our bot will. And then uh, we tell it what console that we're gonna be um, plugging into. The console will then run. So this is going to run our actual like dolphin instance. Uh, we have to connect to it, like as in the, uh, uh, the, the program code has to connect to the Dolphin instance. Uh, and then we're gonna plug our controller in um, after that. And from there, uh, we just loop forever in uh, getting new game states. Uh, this step function from the console will give us a new game state. The game state represents the full state of the game at each frame. So each loop in this uh, while loop is going to be a frame of the game that uh, we can make decisions based off of. So let's try running this code and see what happens. So we're just gonna run uh, puff.py. In this instance, we're gonna be running a, uh, we're gonna make a uh, Jigglypuff AI that will try to rest us. But at the moment, you can see it'll pop up with a, a, a faster melee Slippy 2.1.1, which is the latest version of Slippy. They can hit play. And it'll boot up. And you can see here we are in the Slippy Online. Though uh, we didn't actually say uh, for our bot to press any buttons at this point, so uh, it doesn't kind of do much of anything. The controller board is here, but it's not pressing any buttons since that's expected. All right, so we can quit out and let's uh, make it press the buttons. So the first thing that we wanna do is uh, use some of our helper code to navigate the menus. So um, also on uh, example.py, I have inside of the libmelee, this is a more fleshed out example program that you can uh, uh, view for reference. Uh, we're gonna use a menu helper, which is a really useful uh, helper function that will be useful for navigating the menu systems. So in this case, we're just gonna copy a little bit of code and then we'll explain what it does here and here. So now what we're gonna be doing is looking at the game state that we just received per frame. And if we're in a game or in sudden death, then we'll just kind of do nothing. We'll just pass for the moment. And uh, if we're in a menu, we're gonna uh, pass the uh, control off to menu helper. So we'll pass it the game state, our given controller, tell us what port we are. Uh, we're gonna choose our character, which would be Jigglypuff. And we're gonna pick the stage. Let's go to Battlefield. Um, we're not gonna be using a connect code, we're just gonna be playing locally. So give that an empty string. Uh, auto start equals false, just to make it a little bit easier for us to work in this. And now let's see what this looks like. Run that code. Me! 
And now you can see the bot will automatically go into the versus mode menu for us, pick its character, and then let us know that it is ready by following our character model, or uh, hand. So let's pick a character. You see the bot will automatically go right into battlefield and then kind of do not much of anything. It ducks because uh, the last button that we pressed was down in the menus and we didn't say to do anything else. So now we're in a good spot to start actually writing some code to make our bot do stuff. So let's quit out again. So instead of passing here, what we're going to do is try to make a, uh, a Jigglypuff AI that will kind of chase us down and rest us. So the first thing we want to do is have if game state dot distance is less than four. Now these are in-game units, so four is pretty short distance. It's about the size of Jigglypuff, probably a little bit smaller. We're going to say controller dot press button. And then we're going to press the B button. Melee dot use. I can't type. Button dot button underscore B. This will press the B button and then controller dot tilt analog. Uh, there's a separate function for tilting either the, uh, the C stick or the main stick. So in this case, we're going to tilt the uh, main stick, which is button underscore main. And then uh, we give it an X and Y coordinate. So this is the uh, X value and Y value of the stick. So uh, this ranges from zero, which is left or down, to one, which is up or right. So this will be a neutral input for the X co uh, coordinate and uh, down. So this will basically do down B. And we'll just say else uh, an empty input. So we say controller dot empty input. This will uh, basically uh, have all of the sticks uh, at uh, neutral and uh, unpress all buttons. So this will just have the bot do nothing. So now we'll uh, expect the bot to, if we're close to it, rest us. And uh, if not, then just kind of sit around. So let's give that a try. Oops. You can see it navigates the menus just fine again. Pick a character. And let's see what happens. It works. But we don't want the bot to just kind of sit around and wait for us to come to it. So let's try to uh, add a little bit more logic to make it come to us. So right about here, we're going to see uh, what side the bot is on. So we say on left equals game state dot player. X. So the uh, game state has a player uh, list uh, that uh, you can, in a player map that you can index by uh, controller port. So this will give us the uh, player state at uh, controller port one. So this will be the bot's X position. So if, say, if, it got, if the bot's X position is less than our opponent's X position, then we'll be on the left. And then we can controller dot tilt analog. Actually, I'll just copy this. So uh, in Python, you can uh, take a Boolean value such as this and uh, turn it into an integer and it'll be either zero or one. So this will be a zero or a one depending on whether we are on the left of our opponent. So basically this is going to move us towards the opponent. It'll move the uh, X position of the main stick uh, towards our opponent at all times. And uh, just because we don't want to keep on pressing the uh, B button, let's release the B button here. You can see we can release uh, the B button um, in that instance. So let's get rid of this empty input now. So now it will walk at us. Let's try running this code. Bob will pick its stage and then walk at us. In fact, it'll even kind of do this dash dance once it gets right below us because it's going to move uh, left and right really quickly. You 
can see the rest actually missed there just because of the character model pushing. All right. But just simply walking at us isn't going to be good enough, right? Let's try to make it jump too. So uh, underneath all of this, let's add a new condition. If the, uh, we want to add, uh, let's make it jump. So we're going to say if game state, uh, if the uh, bot's y value is less than the uh, opponent's y value, then let's press the jump button. So we're going to press x to jump. If not, then we will release the x button. All right, let's try running that, see what it looks like. Bot is ready to go, and let's see. Now you can see it's a lot more brutal. The bot will just chase us around and rest us as soon as it gets near. And that's about it. And now you can add as much logic as this as you like. You can add some machine learning to try to figure out, the, make the bot learn on its own what to do. Um, or you can make some training bots to uh, find some cool scenarios. But you can see in just uh, 42 lines of code, we have a bot that can chase us down and rest us. So hopefully this is a good introduction to LibMelee and some of the features therein. Uh, and I hope to see some bots coming out of everybody in the future. Thanks a lot.